there is a small format watercolour that we have in the museum. It's called Dickens's Dream. It was painted by Robert William Buss in about 1875, after Dickens had died. People love this painting because it gives this extraordinary idea about Dickens, the creator of character. You see, Dickens sat there on his chair, pictured in his study at Gads Hill Place. And the characters that he created from his novels, and the characters that we know from the illustrations that accompany his novels, whirl about him as if in a cloud. Dickens looks as if he is in a kind of trance. He holds a cigar in one hand, he's got his slippers on, he's dressed comfortably, and it's as if from this wafting smoke of this cigar, all of these characters float around him in the ether. The ones that are closest to him are in colour. The ones that are further away are only sketched in outline. So there is an idea about whether or not this painting was a finished painting or not. We don't actually know. And it's possible that those characters that were closest to him were the ones that he considered to be most vivid. So, for example, we have Little Nell on her deathbed. We have the character of Little Paul Dombey. And maybe it's no accident that these two characters died in their youth in the texts from which they come. And I think that part of the reason why they are depicted as being closest to Dickens was because of this extraordinarily close relationship that Dickens had with these particular characters. There is a myth that when numbers of the old curiosity shop in which Little Nell appeared, when they arrived on the docks in America, people would yell up at the ship, has Little Nell died yet? And this was an interesting way of indicating just how people followed the story of Little Nell. And of course, she does die towards the end of the old curiosity shop. But I think that people wanted her to be kept alive. And it just is some indication of how close people were to this particular character and how people felt that they could engage with Dickens and how much they enjoyed his characters. This image was composed of other images, so Buss was borrowing from other artists and photographers. First, there is Luke Fields' image, The Empty Chair, an iconic image that was made just after Dickens died. We have Dickens' study. We have the empty chair sat in front of the desk, and that image is designed to convey the message, he is no more. A sad image, yes, but one which does convey some kind of an association between the writer and the place in which he writes. The other image that Buss used was a photograph of Dickens from the 1860s by John and Charles Watkins that depicts Dickens in a chair, looking straight ahead of him and sitting there in a very comfortable pose, but also one that commands respect. And we understand from that photograph that Dickens is a man of eminence, an eminent Victorian, and one who is a professional author and very comfortable in his role. Buss had an early association with Dickens. In the 1830s, when Dickens was publishing Pickwick Papers, unfortunately, his first illustrator, Robert Seymour, committed suicide. And Buss was brought in in order to replace him and, he thought, continue with the rest of the novel. Unfortunately, after only a couple of numbers, the publishers thought that his illustrations were not quite up to the mark, and so he was fired. Buss was very angry about this, very, very bitter. He did go on to have a successful career, but I think that he always had this idea that if he had only managed to hang on as Dickens' as illustrator, he could have been much more famous. He could have had a much bigger career, a much bigger reputation than he had. And so it's very strange that towards the end of his life, he goes and he paints this painting. He did quite a bit of research for this painting. We know that he took out volumes from the British Library of the various novels that Dickens had written, and he studied the illustrations. And so all of the illustrations that are put into Buss's painting relate to the actual illustrations that were done by the illustrators who took his place. So it's interesting that he does this as a kind of tribute to Dickens, and maybe in creating this painting, he manages to put into it, and to put into our collection, and to put into our world, this idea of what he might have done if only he had had the chance.